Hi, and welcome to Morning Coffee with Pizan Academy. I'm Deanna, and today is Great Books Monday. It's also National Poetry Month for the month of April. So I thought I would talk about some poetry that was very, very popular over a hundred years ago. And these poems would be used to teach morality to kids. They would be used in schoolrooms and even in homes to teach them how to recite and how to memorize. And so from a very young age, these longer poems that were written by some of these great fireside poets would be taught to school kids as early as age four or five, and they would learn through memorization. And as they developed, they would start to understand the morality or the history or what the poem's theme was trying to get across. Now in the modern world, poetry isn't as popular when it comes to education. And I think that's really a sad thing because I remember memorizing some of these poems when I was in school and they're just absolutely wonderful. And they instilled in me a love of poetry and an understanding of metaphor and language that I never would have had otherwise. So let's talk about these fireside poets. They were called fireside poets because a lot of people would read them at home or they would teach them at home near the fireside. These were poets from the 19th century and most of them lived in New England. And so they would write this poetry in a style that in the early 1900s, some people said was either a little too Victorian or wasn't really modern enough for the sensibilities. But what they did is that they had a particular cadence, they used a particular meter, and they would use rhyme and language in such a way that they're actually timeless. And so the fact that they fell to the wayside is really, I think, unfortunate for our kids being educated today. The fireside poets were also known as the schoolhouse poets because they were taught in many schools. They included William Colin Bryant, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, John Greenleaf Whittier, James Russell Lowell, and Oliver Wendell Holmes Sr., not the Supreme Court Justice. William Colin Bryant was born in 1794 and died in 1878. When he was 13, he published his first poem called The Embargo, a satirical poem. At 16, he went to college and he enrolled as a sophomore. He wanted to go to Yale, but that didn't work out, so he had private tutors to teach him law. He passed the bar at age 21 and he then married. He and his wife moved to New York and he was editor of the New York Review and then he became the editor of the New York Evening Post, a position that he held for the rest of his life. During this time, he was always writing poetry. Although he studied law, he practiced only for 10 years before becoming an editor so he could have this time to write. Now, he published many volumes of poetry throughout his life, and he also contributed to New York City, having a hand in the formation of Central Park and creating the Metropolitan Museum of Art. William Cullen Bryant is known for his wit, so his poems are a little different than some of his fellow fireside poets. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow lived from 1807 to 1882. Now his father was a lawyer and he came from a prominent New England family, expected to study law. He went to college and decided that law wasn't for him and they offered him a teaching position after he graduated to teach languages on one condition, that he would go to Europe and get first-hand knowledge of languages. So he did and he fell in love with the old country in the history and the languages of Europe. He came back and began teaching, but had to write his own textbooks because they just didn't have a lot of language teachers. It was a new discipline in the United States outside of Latin and Greek. And so he wrote his textbooks, but this career as a professor allowed him to write poetry throughout his life as well. He is most known for his longer poems, The Song of Hiawatha, Evangeline, and Paul Revere's Ride. In fact, there was a time when most kids could recite Paul Revere's Ride from memory. I remember I had to when I was a kid. Our next fireside poet is John Greenleaf Whittier. He lived from 1807 to 1892. 
He grew up on a farm and was kind of a sickly child and so never really took to farm life. So he did show intellectual promise and was sent off to school. He discovered Robert Burns as a young man, and the Scottish poet really spoke to him because, like Whittier, he also grew up on a farm but didn't really adapt to farm life, so he pursued an intellectual career. Now, Whittier met William Lloyd Garrison, the abolitionist, and the two formed a friendship. Garrison helped Whittier secure a position as an editor, which allowed him to write. Whittier wanted to be a politician, but his friendship with Garrison led him down a different path, and that was what he considered to be a more moral path through the abolitionist movement. Now, he wrote poetry, he wrote essays, he was a critic, he wrote a lot about the abolitionist cause, becoming one of the most prominent figures in the anti-slavery movement. His poems often deal with this topic, but some also present an idyllic New England scene. A lot of these fireside poets wrote about several different topics, whether it's what they knew from their New England life and having almost a pastoral approach where they would want to portray a really nice, simple, easier, beautiful life than maybe what they were seeing around them. But they also tended to write about things that they were very passionate about, which is why we get both sides from Whittier. So if you're looking for poets to study with your kids, Oliver Wendell Holmes Sr. was a humorist and his poems are gonna be a little more satire. There's also James Russell Lowell, who like Whittier was an abolitionist and he'll provide poems with more of a moral dimension. I hope you take the time to seek out some of these poets. Now these were the first American poets to rival the poets coming out of Europe on the continent as well as in the United States. Their poetry was very popular throughout Western civilization and they served for so many years to be an introduction to poetry through memorization and recitation and then to provide these moral themes and understanding language and metaphor, allowing kids to develop an appreciation of poetry, something that I think is really lacking today. Well, I'm off to read Paul Revere's Ride by Longfellow, one of my favorites when I was growing up. If you're enjoying our videos, please like them, share, subscribe to our channel, and check out our other social media in the description below. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.